Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Global markets are tumbling this morning across Asia and Europe after the U.S. stock market went into free fall Monday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average plunged by nearly 1,600 points in the middle of the day, marking the biggest point decline in financial history. The U.S. market then rallied slightly, but at the closing bell, the Dow Jones was still down by an historic 1,175 points. While Monday's plunge was alarming on Wall Street, many financial experts say the drop had been expected after the Dow surged over the last year. On Monday, President Trump avoided mentioning the historic stock market drop, even as he tried to boast about the benefits of his tax overhaul while speaking to workers at Sheffer Corporation in Cincinnati, Ohio. During his speech, Trump also attacked Democratic lawmakers who did not applaud him during the State of the Union last week, calling them un-American and treasonous. They were like death and un-American, un-American. Somebody said treasonous. I mean, yeah, I guess why not? You know. Can we call that treason? Why not? The House Intelligence Committee has voted to declassify a Democratic memo that refutes the arguments of the controversial, now-released memo of committee chair Devin Nunes. The Nunes memo purports to show the FBI and Justice Department abused their authority by placing Trump campaign adviser Carter Page under surveillance in 2016 over his ties to Russia. President Trump supported its release, despite the objections of the Justice Department and FBI. President Trump will now have five days to decide whether to try to block the release of its counter-memo, written by California Congressmember Adam Schiff, the highest-ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. In Syria, bombing continues against the rebel-held district of eastern Ghouta, outside the capital Damascus, and against the rebel-held northern province of Idlib. War monitors say airstrikes are carried out by the Syrian and Russian governments have killed nearly two dozen people in eastern Ghouta and another 18 civilians in Idlib, where local journalists say a hospital and residential areas have been targeted. Activists also say nine people were injured in a suspected chlorine gas attack on the town of Sarkeb on Sunday night, the second alleged chemical weapons attack in the last two weeks. In London, a judge is slated to rule today on whether to drop the British arrest warrant for WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, who's been holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London for more than five years. The British arrest warrant for jumping bail is related to a Swedish sexual assault investigation against Assange, which has since been dropped. But even if the judge drops the British arrest warrant, WikiLeaks warns Assange could face life in prison in the United States on charges of espionage, conspiracy and theft related to WikiLeaks publishing of secret U.S. government cables. In Ecuador, voters have decided to reinstate presidential term limits during a national referendum Sunday. The result is a blow to former President Rafael Correa, who had been expected to run for a fourth term in the upcoming 2021 elections. The Israeli government has launched a mass deportation plan aimed at expelling up to 40,000 African asylum seekers from Israel. Most of the refugees are from Eritrea or Sudan and fleeing war or persecution, although Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has branded them infiltrators. On Sunday, the Israeli government began distributing notices warning they'd be jailed if they don't leave within two months. These are three refugees from Eritrea who received the notices. If I do not return to Rwanda or to Eritrea within 60 days, they'll take me forcefully to prison. I will choose. It's not a choice, but I will force her to be in prison if they decide, because at least I will be stay alive in the prison. Those countries are not secure for me. I came here to save my life. So. What I choose now is to stay in prison. 
Back in the United States, in Colorado, the husband of immigrant rights activist Ingrid Quincalada La Torre has been released from detention after he was arrested by immigration and customs enforcement agencies in what many saw as a targeted attack against the immigrant rights movement. Eliseo Gerardo Fernandez posted $2,500 bond on Monday and walked free from the for-profit GEO Group ICE Detention Center in Aurora, where he'd been detained since since January 11th. His wife, Ingrid Latore, is an outspoken activist who's claimed sanctuary in a Colorado church to avoid her own deportation to Peru. Meanwhile, in Kansas, a chemistry professor named Saya Jamal is fighting his deportation after immigration and customs enforcement agents arrested him on his front lawn two weeks ago as he was getting his children ready for school. Jamal has lived in the United States for more than 30 years after arriving from Bangladesh on a student visa. In Michigan, USA Gymnastics team Dr. Larry Nasser has sentenced to another 40 to 125 years in prison for criminal sexual conduct toward underage girls in the latest of a series of trials about his decades-long abuse. Dr. Nasser has already been sentenced to up to 125 years in prison in a previous sexual assault trial. He has now been accused by at least 265 women and girls of sexually abusing them, often under the guise of providing medical treatment. The U.S. Supreme Court has refused to block the Pennsylvania Supreme Court's ruling that the state's congressional map unconstitutionally favors Republicans and must be redrawn. Monday's ruling now means Pennsylvania lawmakers must redraw the state's 18 House districts, a move that is widely expected to benefit Democrats during the 2018 midterm elections. And a number of NFL players on the Philadelphia Eagles say they will not visit the White House for the traditional Super Bowl victory celebration. Among the players boycotting the visit as a protest against President Trump are Malcolm Jenkins and Tory Smith, as well as Chris Long, who also refused to visit the White House last year when he played for the New England Patriots, who had won the Super Bowl then. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world.